participate. So we have our last presenter coming up, Alvaro Buendia. Uh, it's going to take him a few minutes to get set up, so I wanted to jump in a minute ago to tell you a little bit about uh, the cool thing about this layering system. What always happens in production is a piece like this, like when he was showing you how the head will be bigger or the head will be smaller, uh, a lot of times art directors, they constantly be like, ah, oh, just pull this point here, make it bigger, and now make this one smaller. Oh, I thought I saw one two days ago where the head was way larger. And in a traditional sense, when we're doing this out of some of our other packages, uh, we'll have to create that. And we send them a screenshot, and then maybe two hours later, we get a reply. Or it could even be a day. And here, we can just really quickly, iteratively use a layer system or others to get the kind of feedback we need to move on. And that's super crucial in a production pipeline to be able to move that quickly and have our direction to prove what you want to do. And, and actually, this is what Eddie used on this. He was able to sit down pretty quickly within about an hour or so with an art director to prove something that could normally take a couple days to do. And uh, just to recap, um, Kenson, he showed you how we can do a lot of the high resolution detail in sculpting. And Alvaro is going to focus more about those first stages in ZBrush when you start without any base meshes and how you can quickly get some good forms using a lot of the new tools from 405 and 406, including some of the ZR mesher function, uh, functions. And he's also going to be focusing on the Ultralisk. And if you guys remember from the cinematic, the Ultralisk was that huge creature running down the street that was smashing the siege tanks and, and just causing all sorts of destruction. Um, and I guess uh, some other interesting stuff about Alvaro, like Kenson, he loves doing monsters, loves doing creatures, and he's just grown up doing this, and he's just very natural at it. So I think first off, he'll probably show you a couple of his uh, professional images and his uh, personal art images from some of the work that he's done, and we'll leave it from there. All right, can, uh, can everybody hear me? Hello. Um, so, my name is Alvaro. I've been an investor for about six years. Um, I'm, a, I'm originally from Mexico. I'm the first Mexican in, in Blizzard Cinematics, which is not as exciting as being the first Korean, but whatever. Um, I didn't cry when I saw Blizzard Cinematics, but it was close. Uh, but I'm always crying on the inside, so it's okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. Anyways, uh, I'm going to show you a couple of Im images that, uh, that uh, I do in ZBrush. This is personal, personal stuff that is a little bit different from what I do in, in, in uh, Blizzard. It's more, um, more of an illustration-like stuff that I've been doing lately. Uh, this is all, all ZBrush, like all ZBrush and Photoshop. You know? um, it's all from BBR, BBR renders. Uh, some will do it. Some goods are fun to stop. And uh, some work at. No, I don't ask. I have no idea. Um, another guy with, a, with heavy armor. Um, here's a self portrait. Uh, I had a few pants less in there. Uh, there's another guy, another old guy. Um, it's just like a study for armor. And um, I was using the. Uh, it's the first time that I used the insert uh, brushes, just to, you know, just to see what I, what I can do with like uh, stuff that is just inside the brush. I didn't create my own in this in this one. Uh, this is just a quick study. Like we we. That blizzard always do like a, like a two three hour studies and uh, we use different themes so it's like oh we did, did, today we're gonna just do like a, our own version of a monster or whatever so a classical monster so I chose Mr. Hyde you know this is uh, some creature that they could inspire on battle toads uh, but it's also like inspired on Andrew Dice Clay so it's gonna be weird. You know, a weird mixture there. Um, this is another old model that I, uh, that I did a while ago. And um, another monkey. Uh, some pig. Um, so this is just the studies that I've been doing in, in the, uh, my own free time. Uh, but uh, they're, they're all 
paint over it so that it's no textures or anything. Um, so I think here's me trying to make it like a lot more uh, 2D looking, but it's the same thing, all, all 3D. So just gonna scroll through this uh, fast. Um, that'll be it for my personal work. Um, just wanted to get, uh, get you guys familiar with some of the personal stuff that I do. But now, the fun, fun part, I'm, uh, I'm going to show you some of the uh, creatures that I sculpted in, uh, in Sea Rush for uh, Heart of the Swarm. Here's the, um, here's the Nidus work, uh, the Nidus swarm. Um, it's, uh, I'll, I'll show you the, uh, the concept in a second. So uh, here's the texture version. Eddie Kim, uh, very talented uh, texture artist, he uh, textured it. Uh, here's the paint over. Uh, they took, uh, from Jonathan Ruby, took my uh, model and uh, did some quick, uh, quick uh, mock-up of what uh, the final texture will look like. Here's the, uh, the image that I used as reference. I don't know what the concept artist used as reference, but that's what I used. Um, so, uh, here's uh, the, the uh, cert. Um, this, this model was particularly fun because uh, I I uh, grabbed the, the model that they had from in-game and uh, that's basically like the, I had a very basic uh, concept and uh, most of it I, I, I got to model it, model it slash concept of myself. So. That was, a, that was a fun part, you know, so it was more, a little bit more creative to, to, uh, to sculpt. Um, in this, uh, in this uh, cinematic, um, we, had, we uh, had um Seabrush 3, I believe, release 5, about, I think. So uh, we didn't have uh, any of the cool, really, really cool uh, stuff that they came up, came up with, uh, with David, which is... Uh, Zero measure or uh, like um, uh, edge uh, edge loop uh, uh, by groups. Uh, a lot of like a lot of uh, brushes they didn't have. So that's a little bit like uh, longer of a process that if I did it now. So uh, but uh, the way I did this one was with uh, with C spheres and then uh, he sculpted on top of the C spheres. Then I brought it onto a different server and re it. And then I brought it back and sculpted. Uh, I mean, and uh, projected and re-sculpted. Just basically uh, uh, did a surface detail for it. Here's uh, how it looks in the cinematic. John Tom uh did uh, some paint overs of the of the sculpt uh, to show how the. Uh, Show how the uh, scale will, will, uh, will be represented on the, on, the, on the cinematic. So he just has fun. He, like, he likes doing really cool stuff like this, like putting uh, like uh, things that we know when we have sort of, sort of an idea of what the scale is. So that gives like mentally a better idea of how big is the ultra is. The ultra is. This is an inspiration or a concept that I got. Uh, the, the, uh, the final concept is pretty different, but we use this as like a, kind of like a flavor uh, concept. Um, here's another uh, paint over, and uh, he's, uh, he's just indicating what the surface wants, wants it to look like. Here's the, um, here's the cinematic. Final concept uh, that uh, Bernie came did. Um, I use this as an overall like um, representation of how, it, like uh, I use this just to get an idea of how uh, how the uh, overall character looks like. But um, at, at the end, he helped me uh, with a very 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 useful uh, ortho that I'm going to be using for uh, for this demo. So um, first, I'm going to. Let me select this. I need this, uh, this link. I'm going to put this on the back. And 
guys see, uh, we'll see why in a second. So uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to bring the texture over here on the, on the texture menu. I'm going to import this, uh, this image that I just showed you. And, uh, and now I'm going to just create a simple plane. Here in Zimrush, uh, you, you can see that part of uh, all the mysteries uh, Zimrush comes with. Planar and uh, rig. You can start many things from uh, all these primitives. So I'm going to select the plane. Um, he has a basic UV already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the image, the, the image that I just showed you over here. You're gonna, you're gonna import it over there, but you're gonna find it here on the text on the sub to menu texture. Then click on the uh, the icon there, and then you're gonna find it here. So now you see that the image is there, uh, but it's stretched. I could go on Photoshop and. Um, and fix it there so it fits the, uh, the perfect square. But uh, to save time, what I'm going to do is, uh, as you see, my, my image is in the backwards, so I'm going to use uh, the see-through option here. So this is going to allow me to match the, um, match the concept. So what I'm going to do now, uh, you can see that uh, the mesh is not uh, not high enough to, for me to. I'm gonna. I need to need a, do a mask uh, around the. Uh, what I'm gonna be demo, demoing is this claw here, and I'm. Uh, and um, the way I'm going to do this is I'm gonna go on geometry and I'm going to subdivide it a bunch of times. I'm gonna delete the lower mesh. So it doesn't it doesn't matter. It's super high. And. Uh, now that I have enough uh, geometry to, to do a mask, uh, I can uh, go and press control and uh, start filling it in. So I'm uh, gonna do it really quick. It doesn't have to be very precise. Just just uh, good enough so it, really, it has an overall representation of the of the claw shape. Like this again. So there you go. Uh, should be pretty good overall. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on uh, sub two. Oh no, sorry, in geometry, edge loop, and I'm gonna go uh, edge loop mask border. So this is gonna make, uh, if I turn off my, te turn off my texture, you can, uh, you can see that uh, you create a uh, poly group and uh, edge loop around, around the mask. So this is gonna allow me to hide this and go on uh, geometry and uh, modify topology and delete hidden. And that's gonna be what I uh, what I what I was hidden. The way I hid it, by the way, was uh, Control Shift, and then just click on the on the poly group that you want to uh, isolate. So now that I do this, I can uh, you see that the texture remains in there. So that's it's gonna become handy later on. I'm going to do now is I'm going to mask this. I'm going to go on sub two on uh, yeah sub two sub, uh, sub two and then just extract. So as you can see the the default thickness it's a little bit too thin for what I need. So I'm going to go thicker extract uh, and then accept. And there's a pepper. I don't know why Mexican making pepper is not helping my case, but uh, 
as you can see, the, uh, I'm still on the Bronx up to, so this is like this is where, where it's gonna become my reference uh, sub two. I'm gonna put it on the back. Uh, I'm gonna press shift so this becomes straight, and I'm gonna move it back. So that way I have free reference right there. If I turn on the texture, there you go. Perfect reference. Uh, so now I can go on the actual uh, software that I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna smooth it a little bit. So, as you can see, the, um, the shape is okay on the side, but then the front is very, very, uh, very flat. So, to get a better, better idea of uh, the curvature that I need, I'm gonna go to back to the front concept, which is not a very exact, but it will help me, you know, get an idea. So I'm gonna go on uh, see through again. shape it based on the front uh, based on the You can see that it looks good, but uh, the air director wanted it a lot more uh, spiky, so this is a very uh, handy tool for when you need very spiky stuff. And if you want to make it even more, uh, even more, even more uh, sharp, you can go on a curve and turn on back a curve, and then you can smooth it, and you see that you can make very sharp stuff. And then I'm going to go on bulge. I mean, on uh, Inflate right there. I'm gonna give it a little more volume. And uh, this is the Nike logo. So now I'm gonna shift a little more towards this version. So it's gonna be a little tweaking, you know. What you want, you know, you get exactly what you need. As you can see in here, uh, I made some, uh, add some holes when I, uh, when I made my, my mask, I didn't uh, feel out of the way, but it's okay. I'll be able to, I'll be able to fix it uh, with Dynamesh. Uh, so what I'm going to do first is I'm, I'm going to uh, grab uh, the dime brush and I'm gonna do the stepping. Yes. Semi sculpted a little bit, and we're now gonna go to on depth. I'm just gonna put the enough uh, volume for what I need when I uh, resurface it. So, uh, for the first stage, I think this, this should be okay. So, I'm gonna go on Dynamesh and I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to get rid of these holes and uh, make the mesh a little bit more uh, friendly for, uh, for sculpt. So you geometry and then you go on Dynamesh. I'm going to make the resolution a bit lower. Like, uh, 96 Dynamesh. So there you go. Uh, now the holes are there. I'm going to make it a little bit higher actually. So this is uh, just 
this thing. Have a little bit more uh, geometry to it. Put the hole in that I couldn't with the other mesh. So, of course, I'm doing it very rough because you know, it's a short demo. So, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on zero measure, which is really, really awesome. And uh, I'm going to press. Before I go on zero measure, I'm going to. I'm gonna see what it does first, just to get an overall idea. See how the, the tool uh, represents the, the uh, curvature right off that without me indicating what uh, directions I want. So there you go. Um, so you get a pretty clean mesh right off that. Um, but if you want a little bit more control, uh, what you can do is you can go on uh, zero mesh guides and uh, you want to indicate more uh, specifically where your curves you want them to, you want to, uh, to flow, you know. It's gonna make your life easier later on when you, know, you bring it into whatever software you are used to for the model and uh, it's gonna save you a lot of time. So you measure you can see that the mesh is going a little bit more towards the the towards the curves that I indicated. You can use your judgment or like if you're if you're working on uh, on production on something for production you can ask uh, anybody who's rigging the model you know, they want something that's more specific. As you can see the outer lines are going towards the, uh, the direction that they want. So I'm going to smooth this a little bit here. Right shape a little bit better. Um, now also if you want uh, more specific uh, instruction, instructions, uh, you can uh, go on your uh, uh, brush and then uh, select the last one. Control last shift will uh, put the negative marquee um, tool. Uh, uh, so as you can see, we have uh, this you know, chunk of geometry that I want uh, some loops. Uh, I want some loops in there, so I'm going to go. That's what I'm going to do, and so I'm going to go on edge loop, and I'm just going to. And you can do this as many times as you want. And uh, it creates polygroups, so if you want to isolate those loops and then just create more loops inside, you can go here and just repeat as many as that times as you want. And then uh, when you smooth, you, you have a very uh, good start for a spike. So now you can uh, go on your. Uh, on your uh, Transpose and uh, extrude it. You can move it or uh, pinch it uh, to make the, the end smaller. So uh, once I hide it, you can see that uh, it's getting a, a better spiky shape. Now, uh, when I 
high skull. The, um, the spike that I do here is gonna hold up the, uh, my, my skull way better than if I uh, just uh, pulled out the geometry and I'm not gonna get any wear out the artifacts or anything. So this is really, 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 really helpful uh, for when you're doing production stuff. You know? uh, so I'm gonna bring the ultralist like the, uh, the actual skull that I did uh, back, back for a uh, kind of a swarm. And, uh, and there I'm gonna, I'm gonna... Just one second, so it looks... I'm gonna select the part that I sculpted for you guys. Well, that I the base mesh. Um, so let's uh, suppose that I sculpted that on top, on top of, uh, of what I did. You know. So what I'm gonna do. Uh, this is a high res mesh. I'm gonna go and reconstruct. So it's gonna allow me to go to uh, my lower subdivision. So in case you have. Uh, Mesh from uh, from a different like ZBrush version or for, for, from a, a different software or whatever, uh, you can bring in reconstructor like, uh, as long as the uh, geometry screen. No? So this uh, level has enough uh, geometry. There's no, no really informa enough information for me to resurface, so I'm gonna go on geometry, I mean, uh, no, no, sorry, a little sub tool. On top of the duplicators, and I'm gonna go on geometry and uh, play higher. And then a couple of solutions. Yeah, because uh, I was gonna show the. Uh, Freeze of division and the zero measure is the same thing, so it should be good enough. So, thank you guys for uh, listening. Uh, any questions?